My name is Zoe Chow, and I play the character of Sarah Yang. Love Life takes place over 10 episodes. Um, it foregrounds uh, Darby Carter. Uh, I play her best friend. And um, each episode uh, examines one love relationship that she has um, over like a decade. The, each episode is, so you've, each episode is like a different relationship, a love relationship. Sure. Um, my relationship with Darby uh, dates back to the, the first day of college. We, um, uh, this series sort of tracks 10 years of, of their lives. And so we go from like their early 20s into their early 30s. And um, yeah, we're best friends and sort of yin and yang. I play a very boisterous, wild, um, spontaneous uh, person and that draws out um, Darby from more of a shell, I would say. So I am dating Jim and uh, I in my head, we all like met at like the ice cream social in, in college, um, you know, the first week of orientation. And um, yeah, what's cool about Sarah and Jim's relationship is they are very different, but really dig each other and I think respect each other's differences and play a lot. Um, but just like, you know, every relationship, they experience changes and um, there comes a point in the season where they find themselves having different priorities. And um, Jim inherits a house and wants to move outside of the city. I think he's burned out on New York a little bit. And Sarah is still really chasing the fun. Um, and so they have to make a decision as to whether they stay together or part ways. So they're all in their young 20s, and I think for Sarah, like, she's super confident and uh, assured and um, sort of absolute in her ways. And, uh, is, it's a time where it's more acceptable that she's a party animal and, um, you know, pulls all-nighters and, and kind of rages. And it's cute and, you know, you can kind of roll your eyes like, oh, Sarah, she's really going for it. <laughs> um, but, you know, time passes and, and the characters get more invested in their careers and in relationships and in developing their own uh, selves and and Sarah is we find that Sarah gets a little lost and um, I think in a group of friends not everybody matures at the same rate um, and in your late 20s early 30s it, it, there's like this natural breaking apart of things and you either some relationships either break apart and come back together stronger, or some relationships just break apart. Um, and we find Sarah like really hits a wall, and um, these these uh, what were once like fun party tricks have now become some bad habits that she needs to work through, and. Um, yeah, we get to see her sort of bang her head against the wall, and then we get to see her on the other side of that at the very end. Yeah, we're all buds now. It's so nice to be brought back together. Uh, 
I last saw them like December 20th and I've missed them a, a bunch. Um, but it's cool, Sam Boyd, who created the show and uh, is responsible for all these great characters, he um, established such a safe, warm, encouraging set and really championed us improvising and, and bringing ourselves to these characters. And um, Bridget and Sam weren't precious with their writing, even though the writing was really great, uh, is really great. Um, like each time we would get a script, I'd be like, did you read it? Did you read it? Um, so the, the, sometimes improvisation can be corrective. And this is the moments that I felt we were inspired to, to improv just because the scenes were so good. Um, yeah, and he, he gave us the space to do that. Well, we, were, we shot uh, winter, we shot summer for winter. It was like August or early September, and we were in St. Mark's with, you know, fake snow, which is actually soap suds, um, and we're bundled up, and it's so hot, and we're, it's like Friday night in St. Mark's at like 9.30 at night, and people are just like ready to go and we're just melting but pretending to be cold and that was a real like new, shooting in New York moment like this is wild when we were in the winter it would be so cold that sometimes you had the lines but you couldn't get my mouth could not move the way it was supposed to because it was so cold. So there's just like a lot of moments where it's like, they're in there, guys. I'm just really cold and I'm having trouble getting them out. Um, but yeah, every day was super fun. And Anna is, um, was such a fearless leader and really generous in like bringing us all together and creating, um, yeah, a little family. I mean, it's, you know, you get the script and you, um, you know, you, in your mind you see how it's, it's going to be, right? And then what was so cool about each episode is that we got new blood. It'd be a new lover or it'd be her mother or it'd be her brother, you know. Um, and as soon as that actor comes in the room, you're like, oh, wow, I see this in a completely different way. You know, I had this one um, imagined version, but then here is this person who's like a fully dimensional human who's bringing so much of themselves to the, to the script. And like, um, I don't know, it happened every time there was like a new lover. I'd be like, oh, cool. And I was also so pleased that Darby had such a range and taste. Um, but I think what was a surprise was we started this project and it felt like Sarah was very much um, a source of levity and comedic relief and um, also Darby's hype girl. But we, uh, Anna and I had such a lovely connection and, and um, this creators were so excited about this friendship that they really um, let us explore Sarah in this cool way and, and find so many more dimensions to her. And so she came, became um, kaleidoscopic, you know, really bright colors and then really dark, dark colors. And it was such a fun and challenging acting exercise to explore the different corners of this complex person. I really like Danny Two Phones. Um, I mean, all the actors who uh, joined us were are just so stellar and lovely human beings. Um, but Danny Two Phones, I read the, that script and he sounded so whiny and so annoying and like, Darby, don't do it. But then Gus walks in and he is truly 
an instant, you just like him so much. And it was cool. It played against, he played against the wine in it. And, and um, you know that they're not supposed to be together, but you, I found myself rooting for him. And then I'm very excited about the finale. I dig it. dig it. I am one hundo about it. <laughs> yeah. While experiencing the making of Love Life, it I felt a lot less alone in this quest for love. You know, like I think um, Love Life does such a great job illustrating how messy and exciting and thrilling and confusing and surprising love can be. And, um, and similarly, how wild growing up is. And I think sometimes, you know, growing up and falling in love and just living this life can feel very lonely and isolating and and it's really cool to watch these sound bites of life reflected in a show um and i'm like oh yeah i for one i'm just like all right maybe i haven't been doing it all wrong you know sasha made a really great point about um, learning to love yourself before you can really love others um, fully. I think it's, I, get, I think we get to see Sarah and Darby and um, other characters practice self-love and the rewards of, of, um, doing the work on yourself and then getting to be available to somebody else because you have your stuff sorted. Kaleidoscopic, um, surprising, and romantic. <laughs> Love life is kaleidoscopic, surprising, and romantic. The way I think of love life is um, these mini portraits or snapshots of um, Darby Carter's life and all the people that she loves um, and the movements that she goes in and out as she um, learns about herself and um, yeah, learns about herself, period. I mean, I think when um, you enter into a relationship in your early 20s or um, you know, you still are bouncing off of people and like being like, who am I, what am I, what is this, what are we doing? And um, I think Sarah and Jim grow up together and are in many ways their first loves and, um, and they're like moving through the world together. But there comes a time where I think Jim starts to want other things and um, and it's it's I think a terrifying thing where when you realize oh this person that you've been attached at the hip to um, we're not moving in the same direction and you know being honest about leaving each other and striking out on your own is terrifying and um, I really appreciate that we, we got to sort of fall in love with them and break up with them and root for um, their new loves.